so I'm, I think I'm interested in, in artificial intelligence as far as computer programming is concerned. And it's actually kind of a cool concept here in Scratch. So um, I'll just go ahead and explain. If you're not familiar, artificial intelligence is just coding um, a computer program to have, you know, follow certain actions. So there's a bunch of different AIs, and I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on this, but if you're interested, you can go to the Scratch Wiki and look at different um, you know, variations of what AI artificial intelligence is. Um, so I guess we'll just focus on like a simple AI. So we'll have a variable that will enable us to play a game against ourselves. So I have a really simple game here. It's just it should look familiar to all of you guys, and it's just Pong. So essentially, we have two paddles, and we're just knocking this you know ball back and forth. Now, as you can see, I've created three different sprites. So we have the two bumpers and the one um, you know Pong ball. So Right now, I can move up and down, but we see over here to the left that the computer isn't playing. So let's think about how we can create some artificial intelligence here so we have someone to play with. Well, we think about this. So what, what we want to accomplish is having this sprite, okay, this bumper, move up and down according to the Y value, okay, the Y value being up and down value of the ball. So what we can do is say, well, we definitely know what we can track the Y value of the ball, right? So if we were to go click this sprite and we go to motion, we can see the Y value is right here. So we can see as it bops around, so it's at negative 100, it's at zero. So what if we did this? What if we made this Y position into a variable? And then once we have that variable for the Y position, we just feed those coordinates into the bumper. So the bumper would follow that Y coordinate. So I'll go ahead and try that really quick. It said, whenever the green flag was clicked, make a new variable for the Y position. So the Y position matches this new variable Y position. So as you can see, this Y position variable is getting updated with the Y position. So they're, they're identical, right? So now what I do is I can just jump into my new bumper here on the left side and say glide to that Y position. So now it's going to take the information from this Y position. Whoops. I think I created two variables. So, of course, there would be an issue. Sorry about this. So, I actually, I'm not sure why this isn't updating right now, but um, essentially, I won't, I won't spend any more time on this. Essentially, what would happen is you have the, let's try this, point 0.1. Okay, so, again, we have a really simple version of Pong that is just running. Um, it, we're not keeping any score right now. We're just simply knocking this ball back and forth. So, okay, I just heard a bing again. Am I still here? Okay, good, okay. <laughs> um, so it, it's coming back and forth. And what we want to do is say, this player right here to the left, this block isn't moving. So essentially, we're just playing a one-player game by ourselves. Wouldn't it be cool if this moved dynamically to hit this block. So what we can do is say, well, what if we could track the Y coordinates of the ball and attach those Y coordinates, so the up and down, directly to this paddle? And we can do that. So what we'll do is we'll create um, an event here, a sequence. So when green flag is clicked, we'll do a forever. And we'll create a variable. And this variable, it's really simple. We'll just call it Y. So that's for the Y coordinate. So now what do we want to set the Y coordinate to? Well, we want to set the Y coordinate to the value of the Y coordinate of the ball. So we just take the Y position here, and we just simply drop it in here. So forever be setting this variable to the Y position of the ball. So we can test this out and see it's running in parallel. So the Y position of this guy is transferred directly into that new variable we just created. So now we can take this Y position and do whatever we want with it. We could use it in a different sprite. So now I'll go to my bumper here. So my paddle on the left side that the computer is going to use. And I'll say, OK, you know what, computer? Forever be gliding to x negative 220. So right here, you know what? I want you to glide not to 10, but to this Y position. So now I'll go ahead, insert, insert the Y, and we'll see that the glide is slow. So it's taking one second for my paddle to glide to this Y position. So if I do zero seconds, it's going to be instantaneous. Now we have a really, really talented computer that's never going to lose because that paddle's always going to jump down there to the Y. 
So I guess in AI, artificial intelligence, maybe this is like the hard level because it's always going to hit the ball. But maybe if we add a little bit of glide time, so 0.3 for instance, it's going to go to the Y position, but then it's going to take it just a second. So there's going to be a little bit of lag. So now maybe this is more like a medium. So it's actually going to be doable for us to actually score points. So you see I just scored, scored a point. And maybe if we you know, pump this to one, it becomes a really like kind of dumb AI and it, it's, it won't catch up at all. So this is just one version of artificial intelligence in a game. And again, I would encourage you to go check out some of the other 